Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Good morning, MCC Baltimore. Thank you for joining us on our worship encounter for Sunday, September the 4th. We are so glad to be before you this morning. Um, I, I was thinking of a scripture that I wanted to join in with. And one that came to my mind was, was Psalms that said, um, I will bless the Lord at all times. That it goes. Amen. God's praises will continuously be in my mouth. I am Pastor Venice, folks, and again, it is an honor to be before you. We're going to do a, an invocational prayer. Amen. I'm actually going to start calling this an invitational prayer. The God, God, God Spirit is always with us, but let us invite each other into the church together virtually um, and honor the presence of God. Amen. Dear Heavenly Creator, we thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for the opportunity to come before you, God. We thank you for this beautiful Sunday, the Sunday holiday, Lord God. We thank you for our families and our loved ones, the opportunity to, to come together and worship you from a virtual space and, and a virtual, virtual setting. Know that your spirit is with us no matter where we are. God, have your way in the service. Hallelujah. Have your way in our lives. Have your have your way in every avenue and aspect of every situation we're dealing with, God. We understand there are things that are happening in the world and in our lives that may not be everything that we desired for ourselves, but you are with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us. And because of that, God, we thank you, Lord, for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your spirit, which is expansive and expounding beyond our understanding and within our comprehension. God, we thank you that you go before us and behind us and that you keep us, hallelujah, with your grace and mercy all the days of our lives. And with that, Lord God, we invite, hallelujah, all people into this space, Lord God. We call this a safe space, Lord God, for them to come and to, uh, to honor you, Lord God, to come and to feel your presence, to come and be who they are, knowing that you have called them by their name. Hallelujah. This is our invitational prayer to all people of all creeds and all origins, of all religions, hallelujah, of all gender expressions and gender identities. This is our invitational prayer that no matter who you are, who you love, who you believe in, Lord God, hallelujah, who you trust, that you know you have a home with God and that God loves you, God will keep you. And God adores you. It is in your many names that we pray. Amen. And bless the name of the Lord. Amen. People of God, stay with us as we are going to dive into our weekly Sunday announcements. And then we will join service. Amen. God bless you. Amen.
Amen. Glory be to God again. I am Pastor Venice. It is such a honor and a blessing to be before you on this beautiful Sunday morning. Amen. We are in Georgia. I know that I have people listening and following us in Maryland. Amen. Shout out to Maryland, Baltimore in the house. Amen. You can also people around the world. So do me a favor. If you are visiting us for the first time, put your location in the chat box for us. And we are just going to give you a welcome and a good morning. Thank you. We understand you could be anywhere else this morning but you decided to be with MCC Baltimore virtually. So God bless you. Psalms 18 verse 46 says this, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. The Lord will not always accuse, nor will the Lord harbor her anger forever. She does not treat us as our flaws deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth. So great is the Lord's love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has the Lord removed our transgressions from us. Our affirmation this month in the month of September is God is gracious. God is gracious toward us. Amen. Amen. Again, I am so glad. We are so glad. I and we are so glad you have decided to join us this beautiful Sunday. I'm asking everyone to do me a quick favor. Like, tag, and share this post. Amen. Share it on your news feed. Let the people know, the people that you care about, your friends and your family know, where you go and you worship the God of your understanding. Amen. Invite them into this place. And while you're doing that, after you do, give the God of your understanding some holy likes, some hearts. Amen. God has been good to us, MCC Baltimore. I am so glad that God has brought you this far along the way. Amen. I just want to take a second. Y'all give me just a, a second for virtual worship with our God. If y'all can just lift your hands up where you are and tell God, God, I love you. Hallelujah. God, I thank you for another moment in time. God, I, I worship you. Hallelujah. And I give you all the glory and the honor. If you could just do a surrender about you, no matter what you've been through, no matter how you woke up this morning. Hallelujah. If you could just take a quick second out your day, head it about Sean Paradiboso and tell God how good God has been to you. Holly, this would not be church if we did not take a second to tell God, thank you. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. For another day. Yes, Lord. Now I want to take a second. Hallelujah. And declare that God again has been good. And even when our understanding, uh, our understanding and comprehension of good does not correlate to how we feel in the moment, uh, I want to encourage your spirit to know that God's got you. God is with you. And then this too shall pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. And since, since this is a Sunday before the holiday, this Sunday is not like, this service specifically will be a little different than what we would normally do. Amen. I'm literally, I am so excited about our guest preacher this Sunday that I am going to move through some things very expeditiously. Amen. And we have rearranged the service just so, hallelujah, that we had, could have this time together to worship God, but so we could feast on a very good word. Come on, somebody, give me some hearts. Y'all ready to eat this morning? That's the question. Are you ready to eat this morning? Because there's a good word from the Lord. Amen. And again, I'm excited about our guest preacher this morning. And so I'm going to just dive right in to our, our, our vision statement. And it, you guys know we have been doing it this way now for a couple weeks. Uh, I am encouraging you to do a call and response, even virtually with me. Amen. So when I say the words engage, equip, and empower, I want you to repeat them where you are, but I also want you to type them into the message in the comment section. Is that all right? Amen. We we believe MCC Baltimore. This is our vision as a church. MCC Baltimore is a resource and a worship center that seeks to engage, equip, and empower God's people to make a difference in the world. Come on, y'all. We're going to do that one more time. MCC Baltimore, you, MCC Baltimore, are a resource and worship center that seeks to engage. Y'all type out engage. Equip type out equip and empower, type out empower God's people to make a difference, an important difference in the world. Glory be to God. Amen. I'm going to get into our announcements this morning. These are very similar announcements again that you have heard the last couple of weeks, but there's a, a new announcement. So please stay tuned. I want to remind you all that we are celebrating 50 years. Amen. As a church, come on, y'all give some hearts and likes this morning for that. 
50 years as a, as a ministerial ecclesial body, opening the doors, safe space, a brave space, amen, for people to come and be who they are and love who they love and worship the God of their understanding the way they want to, amen. And so I'm so glad about us being able to celebrate this year from Philippians 2.16. We are still strengthening our grip, amen, as we hold firmly to the word of life and we are able to boast on the day of Christ that we did not labor in vain. Amen. So many who did not labor in vain. And a part of our church anniversary celebration is we have t-shirts. So this is important. This is the last day Sunday. September the 4th is the last day for you to buy your t-shirt. So if you have not bought your t-shirt yet, do so today. Remember, they are $20. We are asking you to pay in GiveHub. Amen. Just put in the memo, your name, your size, and how many you're ordering. All right. And so that we can make sure that when we order the shirts, this is the last day we can order them and get them in time that we have your shirt for you. Amen. All right. So again, we have more events for church anniversary in September, right? We're in the month of September. I need y'all to put on your calendar the, the 17th. Saturday the 17th. Come on, y'all put that in the chat. At 9.30 a.m., we, we have several guest intercessors coming from our sister churches to pray down 401 West Monument Street. Come on, y'all. Yes, Lord, I am so glad about it. And we have a guest hobbletician, and y'all have heard her before, Prophet Teresa Burson, amen, is going to provide us a word and a prayer on that Saturday. So I'm asking you all to come to our prayer breakfast, amen. It is not a free event. We are we are expecting payment for this. Just so you know, at breakfast, I believe it's, I believe it's $20, either 10 or 20. I don't have that number in front of me, but the flyer was going. Let me see if I can find the flyer real quick. And then I can give you the exact amount. Amen. For more information, it's actually not on the fire. So we're going to put it in the comment section, how much it costs to attend our prayer breakfast. So everyone has that information. Amen. Someone put that in the comment section, the cost of the prayer breakfast. Amen. Again, come hear our very own uh a previous previous prophet of the house, but still a friend and friend of the church. Amen. Prophet Teresa Burson. We are going to then on October, in October, October the 15th at 12 p.m. have our Harvest Festival. Amen. Y'all come out to the Harvest Festival. Wear your t-shirt to the Harvest Festival. Amen. It's going to be going down on and popping. Amen. And then finally, there is the church anniversary on the 16th, Sunday the 16th. And we have a very special guest, amen, from TFAM, uh, specifically the East Eastern Region. Our very own Bishop-elect Vanessa Brown is going to be coming from Rivers, New York, New Jersey. She is the senior pastor of both churches. Amen. And so we are super excited about her coming down and giving us a word. And our guest expediter, who has been a longtime friend of our church, Elder Katrina Johnson-Smith, also out of T-Friend lineage. Amen. And so we are super excited about the church anniversary going down on October 16th. Amen. And then finally, there's the formal happening that evening. So there's a lot going on in October as we wrap this thing up. Amen. The celebration up. But the idea being that there's also a formal. So we want you to come and come ready to dance and to celebrate and to twirl. Amen. And have a great time in the Lord after our church service. Amen. Now, I need you to know, though, that all we have, we have these people coming and that's wonderful. We love our friends and family. Um, but I want you to know how important you are to our celebratory process. Amen. We still need you. We always will need you. And we want to hear you. We want to hear your voice. So please send us a congratulatory video. Yeah, and yes, I'm talking to you. Amen. Not the next person. I am talking to you. We need 30 seconds to a minute of hearing you say just how proud and glad you are that MCC Baltimore has existed for 50 years. We, we need to hear your voice. And we are asking, you have about two more weeks left to send us a video of you just proclaiming that and congratulating the church for making it 50 years. If you can please be so kind to send those videos to office staff at mccbaltimore.org. We're going to make sure that email gets into the comment section as well. We need to hear from you. Please do that from the bottom of my heart, your pastor. Amen. The colors for our Sunday service are emerald green and gold. And so I'm looking forward to seeing you all shimmer and shine on that day. Amen. As you all have known, we're wrapping up our uh, refresh, refresh and refuel month of August and ministries are coming back for, for full force this month. And so 
MCC Kids Social will return on Mondays. Amen. It's going to be at 6.30. We're going to still have intercessory prayer on fourth Thursdays with our lead intercessor minister Tomas and our ministers. Amen. And we will be going live on Facebook for that. And then Bible study will be every first, third, and fifth Wednesday of the month. We have our Teach It, Preach It series coming from the book of Judges. So I'm really excited about what God is continuously doing and ministry at MCC Baltimore. And again, we'll still have Gospel Explosion where the arts will we get to lift up the arts unto God. Amen. And so I'm super excited about that. Amen. I am almost done. I know there's a lot going on, but there's two more very important announcements that I need to make. Uh, the first one, the first important announcement is that I need you all to know that the board needs you. We are accepting applications at this time. We have two open positions and we need a viable board. Y'all write viable board in the comments. Church can't stand without a viable board. Oh, amen. I need y'all to get that. We can do ministry all day long, but without a viable board, we are not a viable church. Amen. Get. I need y'all to really catch that. So I need you to apply to the positions. You are more than qualified. We will work with your schedule. We just need you to know that we need you. Amen. We need you. So if you're interested in the email, please reach out to any current board member. That includes Minister Tomas, Minister Ray, Minister Melinda or myself. Amen. Just because you're on the board don't mean you have to become a minister too. I just want to, <laughs> I want to debunk that real quick. Amen. But just, just let us know if you're interested and you can um, email board 2022 at mccbaltimore.org. Again, that's the, that's board, B-O-A-R-D 2022 at mccbaltimore.org. If you are interested in filling out an application, very important announcement. The last announcement that's also very important is I want to just bring an uh, opportunity for our church to collaborate um, with some some other churches. I don't know how many people have been paying attention, but uh, Jackson, Mississippi has been without water for the last week, y'all. Amen. Their, their water system has literally failed. Um, and so what, what people are doing is they're donating bottles of water. And so I want to give a shout out again to TFAM. TFAM South is putting together donations for distributing water to Jackson, Mississippi. And so this is what I'm asking us to do because we do com we do community partnership, amen? We are an outreach type of church. And so I'm asking MCC Baltimore to be able to donate a minimum of one half a crate of water, which is only $250. That is not a lot, y'all. We can do that. If people are in need, we can do that. I need 12 people. This is all I need. 12 people to give to give $100. That's not quite right. I need 12 people to give at least $20 <laughs> or I need 20 people to give at least $10. If we can get 12 people to give at least $20 and or 20 people to give at least $10, we would have enough money to, to purchase a half a crate of water to give to Mrs. Jackson, Mississippi people in need. So y'all just, y'all, y'all bear with me on that. So when we get to the offering moment, I'm going to call on these, this announcement again, because I really need us. I really, really need us to be a part of this, this movement and this water crisis and, and donate. Amen. So y'all stay with me in that space. Amen. And so I know I'm doing a lot of talking. I told you guys this is a different service. We are we are almost there to the, the, the feast. Amen. I just need to get through this anniversary uh, birthday because it is the first of the month. So what I want to do right now is I want to celebrate September birthdays. Amen. If y'all can do that with me. We, if you have a birthday this month, amen, we want to we wanna raise up some noise for you and wish you a happy birthday this month, amen? Y'all give it up for the September birthdays. If it's your birthday, make some noise. 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 If it's your birthday, make some If it's your If it's your birthday, make some noise.
Hey man, if it's your birthday, make some noise. All right, y'all. I want to give a shout out to my sisters. I have two sisters who have birthdays this month. Um, so shout out to the Virgos in the in the space. And I believe it's also Libra season at the end of September. So shout out to all the people whose birthdays. Amen. And if it's your anniversary month, happy anniversary to you as well. Enjoy, enjoy one another. Take each other out on a date. Love on your love on your loved ones and your family. Amen. During this time. Amen. And so I'm going to expeditiously move into our offering moment. Yes, it is offering time in the church. Amen. And so I'm going to be coming to this morning or today from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. Again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. The word says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it for God's glory. In this first Sunday in September, I am reminded very quickly of change and how life changes can bring us to pivotal points of direction and reflection, make us stop, if you will, uh, while reminding us just how precious and temporary we, we really are. We, 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 people of God, we won't last always. This is a hard truth to bear. We will not last our bodies will not last always. Our beings must and will fade away. And in this truth, we find that we have opportunities in life to intentionally make ourselves a part of something greater than ourselves. We have the moments where we can give of ourselves to something that will last longer than our existence, knowing that which we give to that person, that organization, that ideology has the possibility to provide a measure of security and safety, a level of bravery and courage to others who will partake of it. It's in the moments of understanding where we have the capability to surrender with gratitude, a small portion of ourselves into infinity. Y'all hear what I'm saying? For it is through graciously giving where finite things become infinite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finite things become infinite through gracious giving. So while life changes, the things we can't control, the scenarios that come and go, life's changes cause us to reflect while they'll cause us to reminisce, to reconsider, to remember, to renounce, to reclaim, to reconvene, to return and to re-up for the next. I encourage us to reevaluate the, way, evaluate the ways in which we enter into infinity by graciously giving unto God that which is already hers. After all, whatever, whatever, beloved, you do for God, do it for the glory of God. Amen. For those who would love to give financially but are not able to, we pray that God, the God of your understanding, will bless you exponentially so that you may experience abundantly the fruitful joy that comes with gratefully giving. For it, it is through graciously giving, giving where finite things become infinite. Y'all get that. It is through graciously giving where finite things become infinite. In addition to that, we ask you to do what you can. And in this situation, if you cannot give financially, then add Jackson, Mississippi to your prayer book prayer lists. And remember them in this moment of immediate crisis of water. They need water. For those who can give today and have decided that in giving, there is a joy exponentially overcome with, with gratitude and graciousness, knowing that you are depositing extensions of your finite, uh, come on, your finiteness into the infinite things of God. Just, just, rem just a rem reminder, I need 12 people. I need 12 people to give $20 or 25 people to give 10, so we as a church can provide at least a half pallet of water to Jackson, Mississippi. After you give your normal offering, after you give your normal offering, I need you to go back and give five, give 10, give 20. And when you give in the memo, I need you to say, this is for the water crisis donation, amen? Help us know what is going to the water cri crisis donation so we can separate the funds, the funds appropriately. And th this is the thing, though, okay, that I want you guys to sit with and be okay with. If you are in a situation where you can't give to the church and Jackson, Mississippi, I completely understand. So this is what I'm asking you to, choo to do. Choose Jackson, Mississippi. Choose the people, the people, the God's people who need you. And give your donation this Sunday for water. 
For that is an example of graciously giving your finite self into the infinite things of God. You can give a couple different ways. Text the word give, G-I-V-E to 844-526-6222. You can send a check to 401 West Monument Street, Baltimore City, Maryland. Amen. You can PayPal or you can use Apple Pay. We're going to give you guys some time to do your offering. God bless you. Amen. Glory be to God. Now, as I mentioned, this Sunday is a little different. We're doing things a little different this Sunday. Amen. And so I am now going to bring forth the word and the person who's going to bring the word. Not me. I'm not preaching y'all. Amen. <laughs> I told you we have a guest preacher this morning, but she's not a guest to you. You know her very well. I am so honored this morning to be opening up the floor and the pulpit to my wife, y'all's first lady. Amen. Reverend Pamela, folks. Amen. It's been a long time since we've heard a word from the Lord. And I'm so glad from her, word of the Lord from her. And I'm so glad that she has um, graciously given her time to us. Amen. Because when I asked her, is there a word from the Lord this morning? She said, yes, there is. And so, amen. Uh, Reverend Pam has spoken. And so she asked me to read her scripture. And her scripture, I'm going to read the scripture. We're going to do the moment of preaching to prepare for the song. And then she's going to come and preach. I have not forgotten about prayers of the people, but the spirit is telling me to let that go after the sermon. And so I am going to do just that. Amen. And so this is the word of the Lord coming from the division of Psalm, the 91st division of Psalms, verses one through seven. Amen. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty. I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I I trust. Surely God will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. The Lord will cover you with feathers and under God's wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side or 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Amen. The next voice you hear after this, this song of preparation will be our very own first lady, Reverend Pamela, folks.
but I can't be. The noise in my mind, what I'm leaving. I try to get by, but I'm burning. When the eye, my mind erodes, all these thoughts are troubling. Finally to give up my pain, finally to be on my lane. My mind running to the other side. When it's time to leave my life, then it tries to take me out. I'll tell you what I need right here. I really need, I really need time. I really need, I need a free mind. I really need, I really need mine. I really need, I need a free mind. I really need, I really need time. I really need, I need a free mind. I really need, I really need time. This is the beast that you cannot buy. Send me the love that you cannot mix. One is the joy that you cannot waste, and the other one price you cannot fix. This is the beast that you cannot buy. Finding a way when you cannot see. Man will desist if he cannot pray. I need to find release my mind. I really need, I really need time. I really need, I need a free mind. I really. Need Amen. Finding a way when you cannot see, man will desist if he cannot pray. Help us to find a release. Amen. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Again, I am Reverend Pamela Folks, and it is an honor to commune with you. I'm here today excited in great health, in great spirit, and in great adoration of this space. Thank you to my wife, Pastor Venice Folks, your God-appointed leaders, family, and friends of MCC Baltimore for this opportunity and for your continued investment into this place. Yes, we are kicking off the first Sunday following our annual corporate time out for spiritual retreat, break, and or respite, our refresh and refuel time. This time is always suggested, encouraged, and supported. It is personal, although on a collective forum and intended to be time set aside intentionally to reflect, pause, and to listen to the voice of God. If you're like me, I use spiritual breaks as a time to gain a reset. Now, I'm not alluding that we break from the spirit, but that we increase our presence with our spiritual self as a spiritual being. How do you define a break? Feel free to place that in the chat. So I'm excited. I hope you all are as well. We should be refreshed, clear headed and prepared to show up and show out with new ideas and new opportunities. It is very strategic that I'm sitting here on the sofa because we are going to talk about what it looks like to relax. Amen to relax and God. I'm equally excited because for me, just saying the words break, vacation, relax, chill does something to my spirit. You see, there was a time in my life where I believed any break or pause in my normal routine could cause a negative impact. It could result in a loss of income, loss of goals, the thought that deadlines wouldn't be met. Those thoughts that we can't take our paid vacation because who's going to care for our loved ones? Who's going to walk the dog, check on my siblings, my cousins, my grade school teachers? There was something about a break that just did not feel right somewhere in our times of service, and for many it's misunderstood that it's 24 hours, seven days a week, we collected people's stuff and their responsibilities. We collected their tears that never was able to be turned into a testimony, things that God didn't align for us, even if it means ensuring that the organization stands while our bodies fail. We've overcommitted in our abilities to say no or I'm not interested, somewhere we have been wired to just keep going because this was the true meaning to us, that to be Christ-like, they say, or were we merely attempting to be the God and things? No, that is not how we see it. But if that was you, I see you. So I just wanted to, to have that preface before I get started and just dialogue with you for a moment. So let's prepare to celebrate reflect and unpack God's promises that will allow us to rest. Can someone type in the chat, rest here for a minute, it's okay. 
rest here for a minute, it's okay. Pray with me. Heavenly parent, you do all things well. And we thank you. We thank you, God, for always understanding the assignment, always having our best interest at heart and always offering us rest. We ask right now that you greet us in this space, allow peace and clarity to be relayed to all those listening now and to the replay. We give you permission, oh God, to level the crooked spaces so this message can be received in the understanding and interpretation of those it is intended. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My amazing wife read the scripture, the division of Psalms 91, one through seven, whoever dwells in the shelter of the most high. And I could stop right there because it's the dwelling that just gave me permission to sit for a minute. Then it says, we'll rest in the shadow of the almighty. Here tells me that God is already up front and larger and I'm a mere speck in the background, following behind, protected by the highest form of protection I can receive. It says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. And that's where we've been given permission to surrender. Surely she will save you. She will save me from the fowler snare and from the deadly pestilence. She will cover us with her feathers and under her wings, we can find refuge. God's faithfulness will be our shield and our rampart. We will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at our sides, ten thousands at our right hand, but it will not come near us. Amen. This subset tells us of David's story where David had night terrors, then arrows by the day, pestilence, plague, and disease stalking in the darkness, and destruction laying by noon. David was up tossing and turning and facing all types of issues. Before lunchtime, how many of you wake up chasing down Facebook posts and or text messages looking at those missed calls before you can even greet God with a good morning? David here is reminding us that we are too not exempt from the trials of life. Maybe your arrows are accusations made against you, taunting thoughts of those things needing to be let go, forgiven and forgotten. Maybe it is the leg pain or the arm pain, then the arthritis. Maybe your terrors at night are the thoughts of a loved one you cannot see or touch. Memories and anxieties that have taken up residence in our psyche. Maybe the pestilence, my God, stalking in the darkness is an illness, just maybe. And I could recognize that maybe that may not be it for you. Maybe your arrows are the line items on your schedule. The terrors are whether or not you're going to make it to work on empty. The commitments that you've made all the while knowing the mission was impossible. Your lack of outlining priorities causing you to worry every day if today is that day. Have you forgotten that important appointment constantly rescheduling and putting off things that concerns your own well-being while showing up? for everyone else. You see, stress and anxiety is stress and anxiety. The heart doesn't have time to decipher if it's cold green, yellow, or red. I could hear the voice of David like the songstress stated in the opening hymn, I really need, I really need a free mind now. David was in need of rest. Now we know the impact to our physical bodies when we do not obtain an adequate amount of sleep. We know that without adequate rest, joints, muscles, important structures of the physical body cannot repair themselves. Stress increases, cortisol levels will become chronically elevated. Let's talk about that high blood pressure, those hormonal and thyroid issues, the binge eating all hours of the night and day, mental health deterioration, Immunity and mood is impacted. Shall I go on? You can place in the chat what yours are. Now I went from sleep to rest as that is what some of us believe is rest. Oh yes, I went to sleep at a decent bedtime yet I woke up even more exhausted. Hear me in the spirit. 
normal, decent time. These are personal choices and defer from person to person. Only you can determine what a decent bedtime or a decent amount of rest is for you. But let me tell you, beloved, God has a way of orchestrating situations to get your attention and to get you the spiritual rest that you need. Rest here for a minute, says God. It is okay. This rest that I get excited about is not just the absence of activity, but is the absence of anxiety. Full submission to God, turning over our anxiety to her, asking her and allowing her to restore our strength. It is surrendering to God's offer of sovereignty. It is the activation of our full faith in all things. The dog will be walked. The siblings and the cousins and the parents and the teachers and the spouses through our prayers and supplication in thanksgiving, making our petitions known to God, protected. Be anxious for nothing, says Philippians 4 and 6. Rest in God happens when our faith is activated. Being Christ-like is not a punishment of hard labor. Being Christ-like allows us to be witnesses, testifying the goodness of God, laying our burdens down because the work has already been done. Family, I don't know anyone that can do it better than Jesus. We were groomed on the notion of the three S's and, and I made this up. Sacrifice plus service equals salvation. And God nudged me to say, baby, you need to tell them about the S equal insanity. Because if your belief is that sacrifice and service is equal to your salvation, then your sanity is what will be impacted. No, salvation is not a reward for your constant sacrifices and constant service. Too many of us have not yet defined what healthy boundaries look like in our sacrifices and our service. It's caused us to lose a piece of our sanity. Be the best of what you agreed to be and make space for someone to come get some of this testimony with us. Can you truly ever be all to all? Rest means that we trust God and that God will make a way. God will take care of it on our behalf. Take a time out. Rest knowing that you have turned anything inhibiting a full reset and alignment with God's will for your life. God's omnipresence allows us to rest without the fear that this won't get done or that report won't be submitted. God's rest and restoration allows us to redefine our focus. Things that gave us anxiety, that lifted and filled up our calendar, that took hours to complete, can with God's redefined and tuned spirit be done in half the time our worn down, tired physical bodies can do. Rest here for a minute, says God. It is okay. God's productivity, God's average time of submission is far better than anything we can do. God's response time, God's loan, God's strength and God's shoulder can carry the load that was not intended for us to carry. Resting in the presence of God is essential to be able to carry out the will for our lives. It allows us to have peace with our feet up on the sofa with gourmet popcorn, a series of movies that bring laughter and joy to our hearts. It's through nature, it's through art, it's through intentional worship. God can use anything to remind us that her presence is known and she's got it under control. Sometimes I will look at my dad and just think, I can't wait, I cannot wait because daddy ain't worried about nothing. He's not answering the phone. He's not listening to no bill. He's not worried about anything. Take the time to hear, to see it, to feel and to dwell in the beautiful presence of God, unbothered and without distractions. Psalms 91 tells us that he, she, they that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Dwell in God's presence. 
Family, staying busy gives us the much needed distraction to avoid doing the inner work, which is essential. If you're looking for the ability to declutter and make space for new ideas, new friendships, new opportunities, and for healing. Rest is not allowed in areas where impoverished thoughts have occupied all the space. All that late night tossing and turning, let it go. We fear sometimes new ideas because it reminds us of our past disappointments. And sometimes new ideas feel like a new responsibility, but God says rest here for a minute. It'll be okay. I can show you, God says, better than I can tell you. Resting with God is an understanding that God has dominion over all things that concerns you. It gives us the opportunity to be our full selves. We need to look like God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We have to walk and talk and be strong like we are blessed and highly favored. We have to speak with integrity and love like we are believers and followers of the most high, authentic, proud of our flaws and all because we have truly found a relationship with the one who invites us to rest here for a minute because it's okay. It's approaching a year or more since my last time delivering a message here at MCCB. And it will be a disservice for me to greet you looking the same way that you saw me present before you this time a year ago. Promotions are and have been in order. Financial increases are and have been in order. New birth, new locations are and has been in order. I recall saying I will hold the testimony until the opportune time because I was speaking on faith. I knew that God had us in God's hands. My rest with God is personal. Timing is essential. God will help you to strategize, reshuffle, and reorganize your responsibility, making space for others to grow and walk into their fullness, making space for new relationships, new ideas, and new manifestations. Creating harmony with our responsibilities does not lessen our salvation. It offers a more focused approach. God will indeed give you the desires of your heart and the blueprint to manifest it. But you have to be in tune with God's presence and God's voice. And if you are always busy, God will wait. And so will all those things that you are trying to manifest. Survive from your overflow. Yes, it is your turn. Allow God to reset and restore those places needed in your life. Rest here for a minute, says God. It is okay. Following David's cry for rest, Psalms 91, 8 through 13 tells us, if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent as God will command her angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. God confirms in 91, 14 through 16, because you love me, says the Lord, I will rescue you. I will protect you for you acknowledge my name. When you call on me, I will answer. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. In closing, we have completed our corporate time of reflection and rest. And you may be saying, Reverend Pam, I didn't think of it that way. I did do a little cleaning. I took a few walks, I read a few books, I prayed, but yeah, I'm still tired. I do still have some things that I can't get rid of. I do still have some goals I need fine-tuned. Maybe I need to try this again. If that is you, I encourage you to find harmony in implementing rest and reset with God daily. 
Go to God first and ask God for assistance in outlining a schedule and a strategy. God honors our petitions. Small things can have a big impact because it's purposeful. It becomes a habit. This restoration will still benefit others, but you won't come out the same way you went into this commitment. The scripture said we'll be treading on lions, cobras, great lions, and serpents once we have respite with God. Rest here for a minute. It's okay, says God. And the songstress confirmed it is indeed the peace that you cannot buy. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Amen. Y'all give some hearts and likes for Reverend Pam's sermon. Amen. Rest here for a minute. It will be okay. Amen. It's okay. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God and to uh, for all the things God has done and to Reverend Pam for such a strong and mighty word. And so I am here then to just just to open up, amen, the, 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 with prayer to open up um, and, and pray for you all in this space. As she said, you have had the month to do a refresh and refuel, but we know that that sometimes isn't enough. As I mentioned in the offering moment, life changed and life happens and it, re it, it disrupts some things and it can be difficult. But in this moment, if we find time to harmonize ourselves and to implement natural Sabbaths, amen, we will find that maybe just maybe some things get a little better along the way. Maybe just maybe we get rejuvenated faster and we get refueled quicker. Maybe just maybe God will tell you, I need you to take more time. And that is beloved. Okay. That is okay. Glory be to God if that is the case. Amen. And so we are going to pray with you. Amen. Reverend Pam is going to join me back in this space. We're going to pray with you all. And I know I would be remiss um, to men not mention the fact I know some of y'all are dealing with some stuff in 2022, different stuff than what you dealt with in 2021. There are uh, aches and pains that cannot be described. For many of you in this season, you have buried loved ones throughout the year. You are tossing and turning with next in your life, not knowing what direction or what situation to go. You have had news that has devastated you to your core. I understand there are some things happening and you're like, rest. I How do I rest in that? And I want to encourage us to know that even in that, you can find rest in God. Even through that you can find rest in God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Creator, we thank you, O oh God, for your, for your word that has been proclaimed by Reverend Pam this morning. We thank you for the mighty word that you have given her and how you have used her to remind us of who you are, Lord God, how, yes, life happens. Yes, there will be arrows. Yes, there will be pestilence. Yes, people will fall left and right around us, but we are promised through the division of song that we will not be touched. We are promised, Lord God, that some of the reason, one of the reasons why is because we have long life. We will worship you. Hallelujah, God. And so as we understand for our sanity, Lord God, that we must rest, Lord God, we must find constant and intentional rest in you. And, and that we must also know, Lord God, that it's okay to get tired. It's okay to need a break. It's okay to come to a point where you are saying that I need to take time for myself. And so, God, we speak to the people this morning, Lord God, who are tired, who need rest, who, who are dealing with pestilence and need rest. We are speaking to the spirit, Lord God, to the soul of the people this morning who said, ah, the arrows, I'm tired of the arrows, I need rest. I'm, I'm tired of seeing people fall to my left and my right. I need rest. And God, we know, God, uh, you are able to give it to them, Lord God. You are able, Lord God, to renew us uh, all with wings like eagles, oh, eagles. You are able, Lord God, to make us feel young again and to rejuvenate us. But we must be intentional with our rest. Hallelujah. So God, allow us to be intentional with our rest. Allow us, Lord God, to be consistent with our rest. Allow us to look from you, the only source 
of our rest. Oh God, knowing that it's from your font where rejuvenation occurs, Lord God, it's from your feet, Lord God, that the oil will flow to bring us back anew. It is from, Lord God, oh God, your protection and your guidance, Lord God, through, through you being our shield and our buckler, Lord God, that, that we will not fall when others fall, that because you are the one who keeps us and upholds us and lifts us up. Hallelujah. That that is why our story and our narrative will be different. Oh, God, today I speak to your people, Lord God, and I speak to their spirit. I let them, it is okay to rest, Lord God. Hallelujah. As we rest in you, all oh, about shots, we will be given, hallelujah, fresh wind and fresh mind. We will be given, hallelujah, new opportunities and new journeys. We will be given new windows, Lord God. When we find rest, knowing that after the rest is done, hallelujah, we will pick up our cross again. When we are rested and rejuvenated, we will pick up our swords. We, when we have been rested and rejuvenated, we will open our mouths and we will continue on the journey, hallelujah, doing that what you called us to do, proclaiming your good news and your good work into the earth. But in the season of rest, we will rest. Let us be obedient to our bodies. Let us honor ourselves and rest in you, Lord God, when it is time for us to rest. Lord God, hallelujah. So that we can show your people and the people that you've been good to us, that you are indeed good all the time and all the time. Hallelujah. You are good. And so we speak to the heart of your people this morning. God, we thank you, Lord, for rest and assurance. We thank you, God, for rest. Hallelujah. And it's at this time I want to open up the doors of the church. And I want to speak to first the people who say, I don't even know this God who which you say I can find rest and I'm tired and I, I don't even know this God. And so we want to introduce you to this God. Oh, she's a good God. Hallelujah. I've known her to be a friend to the friendless, as they said. She's been, a, oh my God, she has been a, a listener to those who have no one to talk to, my God, today. And she's been a, a parent to the parentless. She has been everything and plus some. Hallelujah. I think some would say the bomb.com. I know a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think and give you rest in every situation. If you're interested in this, God, all you have to do is repeat after me, God, I want to come to you and accept you into my life. God, I thank you for loving me. I honor you and in you I find rest. Yes, and that is all you need to say in this moment where know that in our, our tradition, we believe there's a great cloud of witnesses worshiping God on your behalf. And we are so grateful for anyone who said those words. We know that God is with you. And now you have every opportunity to meet this God of your understanding anew. And the doors of the church are open. Amen. You are joining a church who, who believes in God and in the God of rest. Amen. The God who rejuvenates and calls us all unto her own. Amen. Amen. And so if you're interested in joining MCC Baltimore, leave us a comment in the comment section. We will have someone reach out to you. Amen. Reverend Pam, is there anything else you would like to say to the people before we get ready for communion? There isn't, but I do. I thank you all again for having me on this morning. I look forward to continued worship. I look forward to seeing you all during our 50th celebration for this anniversary. Amen. And I want to hear these testimonies of how we all are walking and stepping on the serpents. I, I can't wait to hear it. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We'll be right back.
Amen. Draw us nearer. Draw us nearer, Lord. Amen. We are here for communion. Amen. On the night that Jesus was to be portrayed, he gathered in an upper room for a feast, picking up the bread, taking it from the table. He blessed it and he broke it, saying, this is my body, which will be broken for you as often as you eat of it. Remember me. The word says after the meal, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and passed it to all those gathered, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, my life, which is poured out for you and for many. As often as you drink of it, you remember the sacrifice that was made for you so that you may find rest. Hallelujah. Please pray with us. Gracious God, our creator, we invite you to pour out your spirit on us and on these gifts of fruit and grain as we partake of this meal. Bless these elements that we share. May they embody the living presence of Christ that we might become your healing presence, feeding a hungry world. In the name, that, uh, in the name of all that is holy, righteous, and pure. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please join me as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. And although we are not together in person, we are together in spirit. Because of this, we can share in the life and the covenant of Christ collectively. Please take the bread or cracker and partake of it with us knowing that this is the promise of an, a new life in God. Amen. Please take the juice and partake of it with us, knowing that this is the promise of a new covenant in God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We want to thank each of you for joining us on this Sunday worship encounter of Labor Day weekend. Enjoy your families and have a cookout. Someone eat a burger and a hot dog for me. Amen. May the God of your understanding keep you, protect you, and guide you as you come to embrace the fullness of who you are as you are in the earth. May you bear the fruit of freedom, love, and compassion in this season. And may our Lord shine her face upon you and extend unmeasurable grace to you and your family as you continue to endure with pride. May the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge fill your inner being. And may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in the sight of God, the God of faithfulness, our creator, our Redeemer, the God of rest. It is in Jesus' name and the many names of God we pray. Amen. And bless the name of God. Amen. MTC Baltimore, we love you. God bless you. Have a great week.